Good evening, workshoppers. It's uh, it's another Wednesday. It's another Westmarks workshop. You know, uh, you know, we had the, the little bit of the stream streak going on there where we were back to recording weekly. But as it is, you know, news is dying off a little bit. So we're kind of back to the bi-monthly schedule. I know um, that the title of the episode is Immortal Rumors and Rumblings. And that, uh, that of course, Immortal will, you know, forever be just a divisive topic within the community. I will, I will save that for a little bit. Uh, and we'll we'll cover some of the, uh, the the basic Diablo stuff and news uh, at the beginning. I do want to do want to start off a little bit with uh, kind of like the the weeks in gaming, which I haven't done uh, as much anymore. You know, that's that's kind of like a, a here and there uh, since going with the solo sh uh, solo shows. Uh, but uh, as far as the weeks in gaming have been, uh, been really kind of like knocking it out of the park in terms of the uh, the season twenty one. Uh, I'm uh, approaching, uh, I think it was like Paragon, like 1100, which I know like isn't isn't that much in the grand scheme of things. Like uh, it's uh, it's actually that's more on the low side, but it's relatively high for me because I'm one of those people that will like play really hard for like one week, and you know that is a uh, air quotes really hard uh, for one week, and then kind of like drops off, and by the end of the first month, which we're we're now you know upon. Uh, it's, uh, kind of like, that's, uh, that does it, that does it for me, like, for the season. But this one, uh, a good, a good, uh, buddy of mine, um, Curtis is a IRL friend. We've been, we've been kind of, like, duoing it with, with a, a necromancer and a demon hunter. And we've been having a lot of fun just going through, playing the two of us. We're not, we're not pushing anything, you know, we're kind of, uh, uh, doing, like, I think we're up to, like, speed, uh, 100s now with just the uh, the, the two of us so that's pretty good and we've kind of been pushing it up to like 110s um, I think I I finished uh, my the highest grade of rift that I've ever cleared uh, you know solo or otherwise uh, a 110 I did a 110 solo earlier today you know before going through and getting the show set up just so that way I could see if I could or not um, and it was uh, it, that was that was pretty fun uh, in order to go through and do and that's with zero augments because I've been augmenting my speed farm build uh, just because it's like, well, if I'm actually going to go hard this season, you know, again, hard, air quotes, um, I will, uh, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna actually put some time and effort into getting the, the speed farm build set up so that way we can push that one as high as we possibly can for the, you know, the higher XP, uh, you know, item acquisition, you know, making sure that we get the gym levels upgraded and all that. You know, so I've got it. I think I'm up to... Like seven augments, seven level one hundred augments so far, but I think I'm gonna start putting some points into kind of like the uh, the poison scythe uh, is the the build I think I'm gonna try and push with, uh, you know, for this particular season. We'll see how it goes, but even with zero augments and not really, uh, I haven't been focusing all that much on my gear. I'm still missing an ancient. Uh, I don't have an ancient chest uh, that's worth using yet, so it's it's not even like fully optimized. And uh, I think I, a couple episodes ago, I was talking how I had pushed like a 108 um, solo, and that it was uh, kind of like a, a little, I was starting to push it there. But now I'm a couple hundred paragons uh, higher, uh, with a, a couple of uh, better itemized pieces, and uh, pushed a, a, a 110 with like I think like five uh, five minutes to go, uh, a little over five minutes left, and so it's it's good. It's good. It's it's gonna be fun. It's uh you know just uh, haven't really played you know this much Diablo three within a season in quite some time, and it's just trying to fill in time. And I think the big thing is uh, having a friend to go through and play with. Uh, having that uh, kind of like shared experience is always something that makes the makes the whole game uh, feel better. And you know, uh, in addition to that, in non kind of like a uh, video game related news. Uh, there was a, you know, Longshot will love to hear this. There is a new edition of Warhammer 40k that just came out. Uh, so yes, Longshot, the uh, the rules have now come out, and it's uh, it's been, you know, it's always it's always cool. New edition rollover, you know, the the game itself changes, and whereas the last edition, the eighth edition, was like a really big change in how like the base uh, system of the game worked. The the ninth edition is like a even though it's built on that same system changes the way the game is played you know it's just one of those ones where it's like they're trying to rebalance it not through so much the rules but the missions so the rules are largely the same there's a couple little tweaks 
um, and some uh, better checks and balances that's been put in place. But the objective of the game has changed, and I felt that that was a really, uh, really cool way of helping to uh, diversify gameplay, and it helps bring a little bit better balance. Because uh, even an army that you know is a little bit underpowered doesn't have quite the same like offensive output as another army is uh, is put at a little bit uh, of an equal level because it's now not so much about killing things and so that's a uh, that's a uh, you know just a l interesting way of looking at the you know games development how you can change systems and such uh, and you know I'll, I'm of course it, it's less than a week old it just came out Saturday and I'm uh, I'm really cool and of course. I have uh, been going through one of the new armies that they're launching, you know, with this edition is Necrons, which is one of my uh, favorite armies, because of course, continuing to be on brand, it's a bunch of undead, soulless robot space Egyptians, and that just happens to be my jam. So I've gone through and I've picked up, uh, you know, picked up some of the, uh, the the new starter set, the Indomitus starter set, so that way I can go and, uh, you know, build and paint my little uh, robot -y Necron boys. And that's uh, something that I have, I've done a little bit of uh, personal streaming, or uh, I say a little bit, I mean one, a one whole uh, painting stream where I kind of like show some of the processes that goes involved, you know, from making a, a, a model that goes from kind of like that to something that is a, a bit more, you know, uh, like that. If the camera will want to focus in on him, get in front of my face. No, it doesn't want to focus, but you know, uh, I'll show, I'll share some pictures on Twitter. I just, you know, it's, and that's just something that uh, you might see a little bit more from me going forward, having kind of like some little hobby hangout sessions. As much as I love Diablo, Diablo is still my first love. I really enjoy uh, Warhammer, and because of the the ongoing, um, you know, COVID nineteen pandemic, uh, that is uh, something that has dropped off considerably. Because well, it's. It's not really safe to go through and play games, you know, at the, the local hobby shop, even though, uh, you know, the tables are open, not everybody's following mask orders and such. And so it's, uh, you know, it's something that, you know, just maybe, maybe every once in a while play with some, you know, close friends that are also maintaining that social distancing. Uh, but otherwise, it's more of a time to kind of focus on that hobby side, get my extremely vast quantities of unpainted models uh, painted so that way you know it's all set and ready to go for the uh, the time when life can hopefully maybe one day somewhat return to normal uh, and uh, you know uh, as I talked about on the uh, the, the previous episode which uh, I did run into some problems there is I'm uh, still going through and trying to uh, get it uh, fixed I think I just have to, to pull the, the video uh, I have to pull the video from Twitch because the file that I had downloaded was corrupted for whatever reason. I think it's my hard drive ran out of space uh, while recording. Uh, and so the episode 192, uh, you know, so if, obviously if you're listening to this, hopefully you've already heard episode 192. Uh, but if not, uh, I will get that up um, shortly, hopefully soon, maybe tomorrow. We'll, we'll see. I just have to go through and have the time to sit down, you know, uh, pull the video from Twitch and then, you know, reaver kind of like, uh, redo it from there. Um, and, but, uh, you know, on the previous episode going through and talking about like the state of Diablo three and all that, and you know, we've had some time, you know, it's been two weeks, you know, since we've had, uh, that communication from Blizzard, uh, we've, uh, not really seen uh, any any more like kind of like uh, big actions, but at least we we know we know the the lay of the land. We know how things work, and that has has put off quite a few people uh, within the community from this particular season. You know the the uh, kind of it's just it's ended up being the same kind of uh, you know uh, play style as season nineteen, where it's just uh, you know group up a, a whole bunch of mobs, go through you know kill them hold on to, you know, mob groupings, you know, for a certain amount of time, wait for the, the seasonal buff in order to go through, come up, uh, you know, kind of like burn it down, and then you have, uh, you know, the minute and a half in order to, to build up the, the next group, go through, try and get as, you know, as many things as you possibly can uh, when you know that you're going to hit 100%, so that way you can go, uh, you know, kill the group, kill the massive group, uh, spawn the boss and then hit the boss with the uh, the the seasonal bonus and hope uh, you know hope that you have something that's at least a little bit decent. But it's uh, it's you know it's basically it's like three support characters and one trash clearer. You don't need a rift guardian killer anymore. 
and not a lot of people are liking that change. You know, it it makes sense that there's going to be some changes in playstyle, you know, for the seasonal themes. But this one feels uh, a lot more like you're playing the seasonal theme than you are playing the game. And, you know, so it's, it's going to be... Uh, this is going to be, you know, kind of, I believe, you know, it's, I've been saying it for a while. It's season 19, you know, on repeat. Uh, though, you know, I was saying there's a more refined version of season 19. Well, yeah, it isn't, you know, here we are, you know, a month in. It is pretty much, it's, it's the, the, the an exact copy of season 19 in terms of how the overall play style itself is going through and uh, getting, I want, uh, you know, there's also just like, there's some creative mechanics of, uh, a way that some people are going through and like staggering or sharing the kill counters from the seasonal bonus um so that way they never actually drop it and you know that one that one seems you know to me kind of seems a little bit exploitive uh but blizzard stance on it is just eh, you know that's the play style and so that's just it's just how the season 19 is you know uh, or season 21 is going to be and that's just you know the the way that it is uh so you know, uh, you know, I'm I'm kind of largely playing as with the the season twenty one you know bonus being an added bonus and not trying to play around it. I'm not going to be pushing you know one fifties or anything like that. I'll be happy grabbing a like a one twenty, maybe a one thirty by the end of the season. Not anything too major, uh, but uh, I I understand uh, where a lot of people's concerns are, and you know, thankfully we you know we've had uh, you know Adam. Uh, and uh, Filthy Richie going through on the uh, official forums to go and kind of like answer some questions. And, you know, the, the feedback is definitely being heard loud and clear. And, you know, going forward, we probably won't see the devs returning to this type of system again in the future. Uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, a couple of my friends and I, while we were going through and doing some riffs, we, we were discussing what could be the worst possible season theme that they that the developers can come up with and some of my favorites were a uh, a permanent squirts necklace uh so that way you're always running around taking additional damage that the, you know that one sounds great right and another one was stone gauntlets um you know so because at first it's like oh everyone gets some some like little added bonuses you know, you know but then it turns out that well if you're not going to play a barbarian you know, a crusader or, you know, a wizard or demon hunter that has the, the you know, the baked in um, uh, crowd control protection of the various forms. But even then, you know, like a wizard, when they pop out of Archon temporarily, can still be susceptible to it. And you still have to have some, you know, pretty decent uh, cooldown reduction in order to have it work well for a demon hunter uh, or for a crusader that it's going to lead to some interesting, you know, choices. This one, well, it's the season where everybody wears or cubes ice climbers because they always have to deal with uh, stone gauntlets. And so we had some fun just trying to come up with some really bad, like bad seasonal themes. You know, instead of trying to think of something that's cool or interesting, what would be, you know, terrible that everybody would hate? Um, that, like, that one would just be, that one would just be interesting. Uh, you know about things that you could do you know but there there's all there's uh you know there's a lot of things that that could be done of course you've got like the endless walk set hasn't been done but you know the, those those are cool but i like the like just the the play that you get from the ring of royal grandeur or uh when you had the fully unlocked kanai's cube that that one opened up a lot of uh potentiality a lot of different uh sets and builds um, you know, or even, you know, the, the, when we all had the, the, um, the season of nightmares, uh, where we had the, the legacy of nightmares, uh, perma buff, which, you know, opened up a wide variety of builds for necromancers. And then we got the, the legacy of dreams gym, which is now the de facto way of playing a necromancer, um, because their sets have, uh, kind of, uh, fallen by the wayside, uh, in terms of, um, you know, scalable power compared to a lot of the other classes. Uh, and we'll we'll see where the uh, the the future the future maintains. We're probably still at least like another good month and a half, um, at least a month away, you know, from any type of uh, you know uh, rumors or hints or you know testing that we'll see for season twenty two. Uh, so that's definitely a discussion uh, to be kind of shelved uh, for another time. And uh, now you know to kind of get more within line of the actual. Uh, title of the episode so if you don't want to hear anything about Diablo Immortal now is the time you can go ahead and stop watching you know uh, in the podcast 
uh, or just kind of skip to the end because we will have an items of the week and a little bit of community stuff. Uh, but uh, it's it's going to be less uh, so much about like hard uh, immortal facts uh, than it will be kind of just uh, some of the some of the rumors that have been going on about Diablo Immortal and kind of like my take on it as well as the um, you know kind of like just how often the Diablo community wants to blow things out of proportion and get overhyped. Uh, on just the the littlest bit of uh, information or the the little tiniest uh, possibility of information I should uh, I should say better uh, so uh, with immortal uh, you know we are in that time period where you know during the Activision Blizzard investors calls they've said that they were going to begin regional testing for Diablo immortal mid-year and the actual definition of mid-year of course is being uh, stretched you know, a lot of people are just like, it's the end of June, you know, or June, that's it. That's that's month six out of 12 months. That's mid-year. Um, you know, but of course, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a bit, you know, bigger than that. You know, you could say like mid-year, and it's kind of like June, July-ish. Uh, but then you could also even go, like, if you if you want to put the, the year evenly into, you know, into thirds, it's actually like May through August would be almost like the the extreme pushing of it for mid-year and so there's there's a lot of wiggle room and you know um vagueness that's in that statement which of course is on purpose uh but it also is you know it's a very important fact that i feel that a lot of people kind of like dismiss and that are like oh you know they, they haven't come out they said testing would begin mid-year it's already july the game's been canceled um that you know, it, it's a multi-billion dollar company that is giving a positive outlook towards their investors due to, uh, you know, the potential um, testing of their new mobile title that's going to be a global release uh, in Blizzard's first entry into the mobile market. They, they wouldn't be talking about this as a positive um, for, you know, the positive speculation going forward to their investors uh, for their stocks if this wasn't something that was more or less kind of like a sure deal um so you know it, it's it's definitely not canceled it definitely is still coming uh, but we you know we of course are kind of pushing you know to the extremes of what that mid-year testing might be and there have been a, a lot of lot of thoughts and speculation that have going in uh coming around that the biggest as of late is of course china joy uh this is a really big video games convention that's held in china every year uh for the most part blizzard almost always has a presence there though it's very rare that they've ever had any type of big announcement i think that they've done a like some uh hearthstone announcements you know while they were uh, in between expansions or adventure modes where they've shown off some cards that they hadn't previously shown off um, but, you know, it, it's something that's always kind of been, uh, showing things that Blizzard has already shown publicly, just showing it specifically in China. Um, and, uh, there, there of course, uh, has been some reports of, uh, like a lot of rumors and things like that, or not so much rumors, uh, but a lot of activity that has been going, uh, going on. Um, in uh, in regards to a, a Blizzard's uh, response uh, or Blizzard's presence at China Joy, uh, and this has uh, mostly been being covered uh, over at uh, Blizz Planet, and they have uh, have a, a large kind of um, post that goes through you know you know NetEase is there in addition to Blizzard, even though NetEase is a Blizzard's partner in China and everything is published through NetEase for Blizzard releases over there. Uh, they are they're both listed as like two uh, separate companies uh, that will be uh, appearing and showcasing there. So NetEase will be showing off its own games, but will also be having uh, Blizzard showing off its games. Uh, and this kind of like leads to uh, one of the the big kind of like mobile app um, kind of stores, uh, mobile app platforms that they have because the, the Chinese the, the Chinese market is very different from what we have over here say in uh, the you know North America or Europe and so you have like a third party program called tap tap that you can download games and other apps through uh, and uh, since then 
the the official Diablo Immortal account on TapTap Tap has been uh, a flurry of information, and even though I'm quickly scroll scrolling through here, uh, in the the posts are in Chinese. Um, you know, they they uh, Blizz Planet does have some uh, translations over there, but a lot of the things and a lot of the comments that they were going through and replying to people, people are asking questions: Is the game still coming out? Why haven't we heard anything about it? Uh, and they're going through and they're saying that, hey, you know, China Joy is just around the corner. China Joy is later this week or next week, depending upon the date of the comet. And a lot of mentions of China Joy, uh, you know, from the official Diablo Immortal account on TapTap uh, was, you know, generating a lot of buzz. And once I got over here, you know, to the, uh, the, the Western markets, I got, uh, uh, you know, within the Diablo community, there's been a, a lot of chatter, a lot of talk about what this could possibly mean. Is this confirmation that we'll learn more about the regional testing, or are we going to have a Crusader or Necromancer uh, kind of debut at China Joy? Uh, because, uh, you know, so in the two BlizzCons, uh, the 2019, or sorry, the 2018 and 2019, uh, we've not yet seen gameplay for the Necromancer or the Crusader. Those two classes have kind of been held back and we've not been able to play them. But uh you know there was uh some this all this activity uh and uh you know this kind of like constant uh mentioning of china joy but at first kind of got me up in the hype and the buzz and it was like oh yeah that's pretty cool you know if we're gonna actually learn some more information NetEase being you know uh partnered in the game and the development it would make sense that they would have you know the developers there on their side of it to go through and show off the game uh, at China Joy, since this is this is their you know big convention to go through and uh, you know talk to and look at, uh, but then um, something kind of like was scratching in the back of my mind, and I kind of remembered that there was some other interest, there was some other kind of like little bit of a, a news frenzy coming from Immortal uh, shortly after the game was uh, released. Uh, in terms of like when the testing, when when they expected the uh, the the game to be released, or when the testing were to begin, and it became out that the official Diablo Immortal uh, kind of like representative on Tap Tap is not an official Diablo Immortal representative, and that is more that this is this is kind of like the rep that's in charge over at Tap Tap and not. NetEase or Blizzard, uh, and that it's 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 kind of uh, difficult to try and you know ascertain you know, exactly. Google Translate will only take you so far, and that's also you know come w with some of the speculation uh, that some bad Google Translates basically were going through and saying that people were asking about you know is is there going to be a demo you know when is the regional testing going to start when are we going to learn more about the game and the you know the Google. Uh, the, the Google Translate is just like, oh, uh, you know, we'll learn more at uh, China Joy. But then when you have someone that actually speaks the language go and translate it uh, into English, it's we hope to learn more at China Joy. And it's, it's you know, changing, you know, a subtle change in the language uh, that goes from, you know, an official statement that the game is going to be at China Joy to... Uh, we're hoping that we see something at China Joy as well. And we'll be sending, you know, our own minions, you know, like kind of like the little like role playing and such. So we'll be sending our minions and such over there to, you know, hopefully learn more about the game uh, and, you know, whatever news that there might be. But it kept, you know, still was a lot of mentions of China Joy until today. Uh, and so now all those comments have gone been in there, not all of them, but most of them have now been edited to remove any uh, mentions of China Joy in them. And that to me is a pretty big, uh, pretty big red flag and kind of confirms, at least in my mind, that whole aspect that this isn't a true uh, official rep from uh Diablo Immortal. This isn't someone from NetEase, it isn't someone from Blizzard. Uh that it's some sort of like third party that's just kind of managing press for uh the app or what have you. Uh and you know, and so they're they're actively going and removing mentions to China Joy to kind of now go back and walk back all those statements and such. And so now to me it looks a, a lot less likely that we will be getting um anything too big. Um, out of China Joy, I think that one's a bust. Uh, obviously, they could still go through, showcase the game, 
uh, you know, what we've seen so far. We could get additional gameplay footage. There is still, of course, the possibility. You don't really have to make any uh, too big announcements. They could show off the Necromancer or the Crusader uh, just to, to give a, a little bit of a, a hint or a tease. Um, you know, or they could also just, you know, reuse the BlizzCon 2019 demo uh, at this one to allow people to go and play through the, the Briarthorn Cemetery. Uh, so that one is, of course, you know, it's a little bit, if you're excited for the game, it's a little bit disheartening. You know, otherwise it's it's one of those, you know, it's, it's always best to, to take things with like a pinch of salt and exercise a little bit of, um, you know, hesitation when, uh, you know, ramping up your expectations. Uh, but uh, on to another one that's been a, a common talking point uh, in regards to Diablo Immortal, and that is GDC. Uh, Rod Ferguson, uh, who is the uh, producer in charge of the Diablo franchise, not just Diablo 4, not just Diablo 3, but also Diablo Immortal. Everything, any, anything in regards to Diablo goes through this man's desk. And he is specifically having a talk at GDC itself, uh, which we'll be going through in coming up um, next week on August 6th. Now, I should mention, I completely forgot to mention, uh, China Joy is taking place uh, July 31st through August 3rd, I believe. So it's this, this upcoming weekend uh, is when China Joy itself will be taking place. So, um, you know, I, I hope to have this episode out before that. Uh, so if you're listening to this, we should hopefully still be waiting uh, for that information, but who knows. Uh, but with uh, GDC is also going through and hitting next week. That's Thursday, August 6th, uh, where uh, Rod Ferguson will be having a uh, an AMA, an open Q&A for um, uh, digital attendees because GDC itself was canceled. And it's now a online only event that they're going through and having. Uh, but uh, whereas some people I've seen some people within the immortal discussion groups and stuff like that that have been. Uh, putting a, a lot of uh, a lot of emphasis on this one, a lot of uh, expectations and hype. Uh, GDC isn't a place that a lot of companies really make any announcements because this is a convention uh, made by developers for developers. They're talking about um, experiences, tips and tricks, you know, how to be a better producer, things that you can use to improve. Um, artwork you know through your development pipeline you know you have a coding conferences and all those other types of things you know large big scale uh development and psychological uh case studies uh you know um josh mosquera did a uh a post-mortem on reaper of souls uh at a a previous gdc uh discussion and you know and specifically this one is just uh, the description for it, I have it up on the screen here, is attendees can expect a conversation that will feature the ins and outs of video game production, what studio leadership entails, and the reflections from my 21-year career in games that include work on games like Gears of War, Bioshock Infinite, and most recently, Diablo 4. No mention of Immortal. So I, when it comes to hearing any information about Diablo Immortal, I would expect probably a uh, near zero chance of going through and learning anything new about it um, you know, from this particular, uh, you know, uh, uh, convention. And like I said, like this, this is, this is, this is, you know, uh, Rod Ferguson's story. This isn't a place to push Diablo news. There will probably be some news, uh, but just from the way that it's worded, it sounds like he's probably going to talk more about Diablo 4 than he would Immortal. And, you know, kind of like what it means to be like this executive producer, uh, you know, in charge of an entire franchise. Uh, and so, you know, it, this will, this will kind of be interesting. I, I believe this isn't going to be streamed. Uh, you do still have to purchase a, uh, a pass. Uh, and even for the digital version, those tickets are extremely expensive uh, you know, because this this one is you know this is this is uh, an industry convention where I believe you know like uh, it's something along the lines of uh, like I, I think the tickets for the streaming start at like one hundred and fifty dollars and go all the way up to like five hundred. Uh, but when you talk about like the actual physical in person you know event of GDC, you know people people um, have mentioned that like BlizzCon prices are insane. You know, going up to like two hundred plus dollars. Uh, the conference conference tickets for GDC are over a thousand, you know, to to give that kind of an idea of what this what this type of uh, conference is like. You're not going to get, um, 
you're not going to get news from this type of convention. This is this is him talking about his experiences as a producer and you know things that you might be able to pull from that. So you're going to have other people working in the industry as producers or in leadership positions that are asking him, how did you deal with this? How do you deal with that? You know, to share, you know, share with us one of the hardest, you know, uh, you know, you know, decisions that you had to make. What, what, what are some of the hardest deadlines that you've you've been forced to miss? You know, things of that nature. So, yeah, don't, don't, ex don't expect anything from GDC. Um, before that, we do have the Activision Blizzard, you know, second quarter investors call. You know, it's going to be going through and coming up on uh, Monday, August fourth. Uh, well, I don't expect any big information to come from that. I think if we don't learn anything, uh, you know, uh, not Monday, I believe that's uh, Tuesday. Uh, I don't, I don't expect uh, to hear any new any information uh, on the investors call. That's not really a place that they make uh, big statements, and so that's why it was always kind of surprising to hear uh, that they announced the regional testing in the investors call because it's not been a, a place of uh, big interest uh, for quite some time now uh, across any of the like the, the Blizzard franchises uh, you know but if we don't hear anything new at China Joy then this will kind of be the one where they say you know we, we still have target you know maybe they won't use mid-year maybe they'll just say soon since we'll be you know at the end of mid-year uh, you know, they, they could, uh, or it could also give a statement, you know, giving a, a change in the targeted month. You know, now that, now that that door is open, Pandora, you know, that, that Pandora's box has been opened, you can't go through and make a statement Well, we'll begin regional testing mid-year on the previous two conference calls and then not mention it at all when you are very close to not fulfilling that promise. So we're, we're going to hear something. Uh, positive or negative in the investors call about the regional testing whether it will still be going through and coming from uh, coming in august or if it has been delayed for some reason and that will be pushed back towards later in the year uh so again i don't expect don't really expect to get a firm date or anything along those lines as when the regional testing will begin from the conference call but we should get a more clearer window of uh of when it when it should begin who knows we might even get uh, more information on you know what regions that they choose to go and do the testing with, uh, if you've uh, you know if you've heard me talk about it on some of the previous episodes, I recently did a lore collaboration uh, with Echo Gaming uh, over on his YouTube channel, which you should definitely go through. Obviously, I want you to to check out uh, this Diablo lore series that I did for Diablo Immortal, but also he's got a great channel that covers a lot of things that if you're interested in Diablo Immortal, to check out you know, or if you're interested in checking out. Uh, just mobile gaming in general that's his uh, that's his main bread and butter uh, and you know he he's had some interesting things to say about how other companies approach regional testing and they're usually extremely limited uh, in you know where they they go through and do the tests so you know we we, we might uh, not uh, you know it might come as a surprise if Blizzard goes through opens up regional testing and it's not in any you know like big countries that it could be some smaller areas uh, and you know it could be a little bit harder to glean some information from it. We we don't know. We we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, and with one final uh, kind of uh, buzz uh, buzz uh, buzz uh, place to go through and uh, pick up information from, we of course have Gamescom, uh, which is also going to be a uh, online uh, conference. And uh, we don't really know what. It is that's going to be covered there. All that we do know is that uh, you know Activision Blizzard has officially signed up, you know, as of I believe a couple of weeks ago, uh, as a partner for the Gamescom stream, and so they will be showcasing something uh, with you know uh, that space. But we have we have no idea you know, what it is uh, that uh, they will be uh, showcasing. Uh, my thoughts is it's more than likely going to be uh, more things that they're going to be showing off for uh, Shadowlands for World of Warcraft is probably going to be the uh, the big place for them to go uh, and uh, hammer home some things. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, I've not really been following too much of the other franchises, but there's not been a lot of information about Overwatch 2 
uh, that's been put out there, at least to my understanding. And so that could also be something that they go and bring up since that was announced alongside Diablo 4. Um, and, you know, it's at the end of August, you know, which is kind of towards the end of the, the next quarter uh, for uh, it would be a great time for another developer update. And, you know, maybe maybe something a little bit more to go and show off how the game is looking in development, since it's not something that they're going to be showing off since there's no BlizzCon. Uh, and they don't have Blizzard themselves don't have anything really uh, in the works until early 2021. Uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I think that it would probably be a bit more likely that we learn something about Diablo 4 uh, from Gamescom than we would from Immortal. And... What that kind of like brings me to uh, at the the end of all of these uh, you know rumors and stuff like that is for uh, Diablo Immortal, uh, they're they're just handling the marketing uh, and the outreach in a completely different scenario, and I'm sure a lot of that is you know because of the initial response and criticisms that the game received, uh, and you can't make uh, any type of post about uh, Diablo Immortal, uh, you know without getting a phone joke. Uh, and it even it even finds its way over onto the official subreddit uh, that they have, or not official, but you know the main uh, Diablo Immortal subreddit. Uh, when people go and try to have conversations about like the games that they're playing or what they expect, you know this feature or that feature to do. Every once in a while, someone will just pop in. It's like, don't you have phones? You know, even even today there was uh, someone asking about uh, if China Joy was going to announce the the, the testing on you know the the main um, R Diablo. Uh, and one of the first comments was, don't you have a phone? And so it, it's it's just the nature of the beast that until the game is out uh, and until people have it in their hands to experience it, that's just going to be the response. And even afterwards, it's mostly going to be the response that people are just going to have. It's, you know, people still joke about Error 37. Uh, people are going to be making phone jokes about Diablo Immortal. It's, it's just, it's in the zeitgeist. It's out there. It is what it is. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it is because of that that Blizzard seems a little bit, um, uh, they don't want to, they don't want to put the game out there, uh, you know, without, without having some substance, you know, since the, the, the actual announcement, they went a full year without talking about it. And then at BlizzCon 2019, we, we had, you know, some, we, we, we got a, a newer, more in-depth demo uh, we got to see some of the storytelling elements, the uh, actual like active events and quests, and how they progress within the game. We saw a whole new feature in the ultimate system. We got our first like little inkling uh, of the idea of what they're going to be doing with itemization. Um, and then, you know, it was kind of like a little developer update and such. And then since then, nothing. Um, you know, so they're, they're just a, a approaching it uh, very carefully. You know, we, we, you know, and not, I guess not wanting to really, you know, showcase off or continue to talk about the game without having something of some substance with which to talk about, which is also somewhat of the case for Diablo 4. I think there is a lot more pressure on them uh, to continue to push out information on Diablo 4, even though there's not a lot to talk about just because of how quickly things can change within the development. And it's something that they really, really try to uh, drive home. Uh, in every single one of the developer blogs that we've had so far, but you know, it's just uh, it's just a different beast. The the way that they're approaching uh, all marketing around Diablo Immortal is just very different, and you know I guess that that does also make some sense uh, because when you have uh, other big mobile games, there's really not you know marketing or hype around them the same way that a PC or a uh, console title is. They're not. Uh, hyping it for months and months beforehand it's just kind of like oh hey we're making a game and then a couple of months later here it is you know go play and then the marketing and the hype around it will come out once the game is there playable in people's hands and that that could be uh, a microism of you know the just the, the mobile market in general and how people you know go about um, their decisions and things about how they want to uh, how they they play games or whatever you know, the, the mobile market is at this point in time larger than the, the PC or console markets combined. Uh, and that's a lot of that has to do with just accessibility. Because, you know, to answer the joke, 
uh, yeah, everybody does have a phone, so everybody has that potential. Not everybody has, um, you know, a console, and maybe not everybody wants to use their PC for gaming, uh, but everybody has uh, a phone, and everybody has a lot of free time with which they're, you know, alone with themselves in their phone, whether it be, like, you know, just going to the bathroom, uh, commutes, traveling, waiting in doctor's offices or what have you. And so that's one of the things that, you know, you'll have a lot of people that wouldn't call themselves a gamer, but will spend hours and hours and hours every week playing games, you know, on their phone. That type of person that makes up you know, that huge demographic that the, the mobile market encompasses, you know, they really don't care about anything until they can actually play it on their phone because, you know, they're... They're they're not a gamer first, uh, you know. It's something that they'll they'll try out once it hits the like, the top ten on the App Store or the Play Store, and that's about it. Um, you know, it's it's just uh it's just kind of like the the nature of it. You know, for for better or for worse, I'm sure that there are a lot of you know um, hardcore PC fans that will just be you know well that's why we don't want Immortal. You know, it's like because it's catering to those people and not us. Uh, though Blizzard has said that they they want a uh, a kind of a blended experience in that they want Immortal to offer something uh, for everybody, whether it's the person that plays you know for the forty five minutes during their commute on the the train to work, you know, or the the person that's gonna sit on their couch and do some like hardcore raids, you know, on a mobile MMO or something along those lines, and. You know, until we get the uh, the game uh, in our hands, or at least uh, testing in a more substantial state than what we've seen in the demos, uh, we just have to wait and see. And of course, you know, one of the big questions will forever be, well, what's the monetization system look like? Yeah, um, and that's always like the the big question mark that hangs over everything. Uh, but I I at least remain hopeful uh, that they. That they they give that they make a good product as i know i know you know the people that are making the game uh, are going to have uh like the, the best intentions to do well by the community uh in you know to to try and address like the needs and the wants of the those hardcore diablo fans whereas while at the same time making kind of like a, a mass market appeal game and it's something that you know we we've seen in diablo 3 uh you know diablo 3 is still one of the best selling games of all time uh, and a part of that has to do with it has an appeal to casual gamers. Uh, and so it, it has something that, you know, it, it's got a little bit of something, you know, in it for everybody. It, it's not, uh, it lacks, the, say, the complexity of uh, Path of Exile. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's positives and negatives in each of those respects. And we're just going to, uh, you know, let me just have to wait and learn more i guess uh but that that kind of goes through and is uh bringing bringing me to uh, an end on uh, this particular episode uh but oh before i forget it has been uh so long uh since i have done this that i almost forgot about it a second time uh but we've got an email with some items of the week uh where 42 went through and uh, sent in uh let me go through and pull it back up here uh, 42 sent in uh, some pictures of some loot that he went through and found uh, within the, the season that I think uh, most people should be able to appreciate uh, because it's something that a lot of people are going through season in and season out are still continuing to grind for uh, and for that I mean uh, Cosmic Wings and 42 managed to go and luck out and find himself a pair of Cosmic Wings the biggest troll ever of course uh you know he found a set of rare shoulders that had just been coined the term cosmic wings i'm pretty sure that we have shown an item uh, akin to this on the episode before but to just keep uh to keep with it uh you know for this particular item uh these these shoulders clock in with 357 intelligence 347 armor regenerates 3,000 life per second and has a chance to deal 10% area damage on hit with a secondary of uh, 121 lightning resist. But it wouldn't be an appropriate trolling uh, without some sort of uh, great payoff. And so from what 42 wrote, 
the same exact evening, later on in that play session, he came across a rainbow goblin. And yes, it is exactly as you would expect. Finally, after literally years of searching, uh, 42 has finally claimed his real cosmic wings. Uh, so uh, a big congratulations to you, sir, on uh, going through and uh, grabbing those. I'm, uh, I'm happy for you. I know I've been doing more bounties this season than I probably have like in the last two years. Uh, and so every time I now, I've never been one to go and hunt, you know, for those cosmic wings. But I feel as if every rainbow goblin that I come across, you know, makes me anticipate it just a little bit more. So I've gone from not caring to, ooh, could this be the one? And it's like, wait, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't actually, I don't actually care. Uh, but now I do. And so I guess it's just, you know, the Diablo community, we, we all hype ourselves up on nothing. Right? Which is, you know, which is, is true. If you're still hunting for the Cosmic Wings at this point, every Rainbow Goblin that you find is is obviously just going to be nothing. Um, but, uh, yeah. Now with that, I was going to go and uh, close out the episode. I uh, thank you all for going through, joining me here live on uh, Twitch, which you can also go and uh, join me. Uh, I record every other Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, over at twitch.tv slash blizzpro. Uh, you can also follow the show at the WM Workshop on Twitter uh, for whenever I post a new episode on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, uh, or you know when I'll be recording a new live episode you know on Twitch. Uh, which you can go through, come in, you know, I will usually, there's a little bit of a pre-show, which we'll go through and discuss. I hang out and chat with, uh, you know, the uh, the fans of the show uh, afterwards in the after show. It's a nice, like, little community uh, to come, you know, be a part of. But by all means, uh, as I said previously, you can find the show on, you know, your podcasting platform of choice. Uh, you know, we're also on YouTube, uh, except for the last episode, which I'll be going through and continuing to try and get up there. And I made sure that I had plenty of hard drive space for this episode uh, to go through and get up there. Uh, and I, I hope that you've at least been able to see episode 192 before 193. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll work on that one. Uh, and of course, if you have any items, questions, or comments you know, for the show or for myself, feel free to go through, email me at westmarksworkshop at blizzpro.com. And again, that email address is westmarchworkshop at blizzpro.com. Uh, and for the personal stuff, you can follow me at NineBallGamer on Twitter. Uh, you know, I go through, I post about Diablo, Warhammer, you know, science fiction, a, a little bit of politics and some pictures of the beach, you know, because that's, uh, you know, that's the, the best way to social distance is to be alone uh, on the beach in the middle of summer uh, in Florida with a uh, super oppressive heat. Uh, because no one else is uh, no one else is there, uh, which is beautiful, uh, despite despite the humidity and the heat. Uh, and of course, you can also follow me over at Twitch.tv at slash Nineball. Uh, I've been I've been trying to stream a little bit more. You know, I've streamed a couple of times this season. I also, like I was talking about in the show, uh, want to do a little bit more of the hobby streams. Uh, do a little bit of my uh, show my love for uh, Warhammer, doing some painting. Uh, maybe if I can convince some friends over, we can uh, show some games. I would love to be able to, to talk more about specifically uh, Warhammer Underworlds, one of my favorite games in all of existence. I am the SoCal Grand Class Champion, of course, as uh, Leviathan would remind everybody. Uh, and uh, yeah, so just uh, stay tuned. Follow me, follow the show on Twitter uh, in order to learn more, and we'll, we'll see where things take us. I do expect that uh, my next episode uh, will probably end up being uh, August 12th. Uh, but I guess, depending on you know how things go over this next week, uh, we might have more to talk about in terms of Immortal. Uh, you know, uh, we'll just as a, for like the the twentieth time, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, and with that, I wish you all a good night, and I will catch you all later.